Tampa, Florida. The nation's gizzard. It's the magnificent Lassiter Show. Starring the magnificent Lassiter. Featuring the nimble fingers of Michael Serio at the control board. The second most respected newsman, Don Richards. And the world's most dangerous traffic reporter, Gary McHenry. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Lassiter. Oh, thank you, thank you very much, Mr. Announcer. Eight minutes now after the hour of uh, 3 o'clock. That's what it is. Eight minutes after the hour of 3 o'clock. It is a Tuesday? Tuesday. Wednesday. So Wednesday. That's right. Wednesday, May the 24th. I had the right date. I just didn't know what day it was, Michael. Wednesday, May 24th, 1989. That's what it is. 1989. Well, I'm sitting here still not totally convinced which way to go. I have two shows to do today, and, you know, I don't know. One of them requires a lot of work. The other one doesn't. I think I'll go with the one that doesn't require a hell of a lot of work. All right, hey! All right, the people on the other side of the glass like that idea. What this is, it's a relatively light for some of us. Very heavy for others. Uh, crunch up your lips there and the two little front teeth uh, protrude out and, and the two little eyes get, get closer and closer together. Michael makes some very, very interesting faces. Uh, of course, this is a, the new and improved Lasseter, the man who will not hang up on you. <clears throat> it's fun in my throat. And uh, what I want to do today is I want to establish once and for all something that should have been established a long time ago in the Tampa Bay area because, as we all know, the Tampa Bay area is a very unique area. And part of the uniqueness of the Tampa Bay area is the talk radio scene. Talk radio in Tampa is unlike talk radio anywhere else. You hear things in Tampa that you wouldn't hear in the top markets. You hear things in Tampa that you wouldn't hear in the bottom markets. You hear things in Tampa that shouldn't be heard. And so what I want to do this afternoon is once and for all give the talk market in Tampa the recognition that it truly deserves. We're going to start, as a matter of fact, as I speak, they're clearing out a little corner downstairs in the lobby. The Tampa Bay Talk Radio Hall of Fame, where immediately after the show, when the nominations come in and are tabulated, we will write down on the backs of pieces of cardboard, in crayon, the winners who have been nominated for the Tampa Bay Talk Show Hall of Fame. There are eight categories, I think. Let me double check. Yeah, eight categories. Uh, you are not required to make nominations in all categories. You can make nominations in one, or in two, or in three, or four. Even five if you so desire. Six if you insist. Seven if you scream and stomp your feet. And eight if you want to. And you can nominate in any order. The categories are... The Best Caller. I have written down my nomination for the best caller. We're talking about the best caller of all time. The individual caller. It uh, does not necessarily mean the most intelligent caller. As a matter of fact, it could be the worst caller in some ways, which makes it the best caller. I hope I'm not confusing you because the next category is the worst caller. Category number two is the worst caller. I have not written down my nomination yet for the worst caller because that's a tough one. The third category, the best individual show of all time. The best individual show you have ever heard in the Tampa Bay talk radio market. I know that many of you are from Muncie, and, you know, we are not talking about Stasha Stepankevich's Saturday afternoon swap shop as the best show of all time because that does not play in this market. Stasha Stepankevich may well be a great talk show host, but nobody here outside of yourself and other people from Muncie know who he is. Then we have the worst individual show of all time. You may, of course, nominate Stasha Stepankevich and his monthly uh, Saturday afternoon swap shop for that, if you insist. Then there is the best talk show host. <laughs> then there is the worst talk show host. I have written down my nominations for both. I will not disclose them. Number seven, the most memorable moment in Tampa Bay Talk Radio. I have written down, there is for me, 
maybe, actually, I suppose most of you never even heard it. But there is, for me, a most memorable moment in Tampa Bay Talk Radio. And the eighth and final category is the Gone But Not Forgotten Award. That is somebody who used to do a talk show in this market and no longer does. The Gone But Not Forgotten Award, which might be roughly akin to the, you know, Lifetime Achievement Award for the Academy of, of Arts and Sciences or something like that. So I will briefly go through those with you again. This is going to be fun. I love these kinds of shows. The Talk Show Hall of Fame, eight categories that you can make nominations in. Don't worry if you don't want to nominate in all eight. The Best Caller, The Worst Caller, The Best Individual Show of All Times, The Worst Individual Show of All Times, The Best Talk Show Host, The Worst Talk Show Host, The Most Memorable Moment, and the Gone But Not Forgotten Award. Let me give you the telephone numbers before we start taking the nominations in... Pinellas County, 461-9352, 461-WFLA. In Hillsborough County, 990-9352, 990-WFLA. This is going to be a, a very historic and a, an extremely exciting afternoon. There is absolutely no doubt in my mind about that. Uh, host choice? Son of a gun. Tampa, you're on air at 970 WFLA. Hi, Tampa. Bob, how are you? Oh, reasonably. Great. I'd like to take part in this. Uh, Great. Thing. What nominations do you want to make? Well, well, quite a few of them. If you go through them, I think I'm pretty well prepared. No, 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 no. I'm not going to sit here and mindlessly read through them. Oh, okay, well, uh, I'd have to say uh, we'll, we'll start with the, uh, the, the the best caller. The best caller, okay. And, again, it doesn't start. necessarily have to do with intelligence, but I enjoy when Rocky calls. Rocky. No. One nomination. Worst caller, I'd have to say, would be CR from Sarasota. Oh, one, one second here. There's an awful lot of noise coming from the other room in the way of applause. Oh, okay. Uh, CR, Sarah, Ota. Yeah, and uh, the worst show, mm -hmm. <clears throat> well, it'd have to be one of yours, Bob. It really mm -hmm. had nothing to do with you, though. Mm -hmm. You had a food critic, I think, from the St. Petersburg Times. Are you serious, oh. Carol Kirschenbaum? Oh, uh, yeah, that was the worst. I mean, come on, if you think back about it, every single time you'd, you'd ask her a question, she'd just say, well, I don't know. Uh, well, I really haven't... Uh... Well, that's not true at all. Every time we would ask her a question, she would say that she didn't want to respond. Well, that's what I mean. It well, was I like... thought that was great. Oh, God. I was like, you know, where's the best pizza? Well, I really don't want to say... Well, no, I beg your pardon. On that one, she did because she had yeah. some, some favorite yuppie goat cheese pizza place on top of a hotel somewhere around the airport. Uh, That's one of the very few questions she answered. Was it? Yeah, well, it just seemed like, you know, whatever you asked her, she, she'd like, go around the question, and it was a little frustrating on my... I was pretty hungry that day, though, too, so... Um, well, that, it, it was a definite challenge, and here I... Didn't we end up talking about politics or something with her? <laughs> I don't Ours? know. Ours? Probably. Um, best memorable talk show host, I, you know, has to go to Dick Norman. I mean, he, okay. uh, he, he was... He was uh, well, he was a one of a kind guy. Mm -hmm. uh, let me see. Um, that, 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 that's pretty much what I was prepared for. So you didn't want to make a nomination for a worst talk show host? <sighs> well, that, that, that's kind of crude, but I, I, I you know, Sam McClellan, I, <clears throat> he's, you know. Uh, Raven Sam? Raven Sam, he's, he's, he's out of control. That's all I can tell you. He's, he's he is? I'm going to have to start listening to him. He's completely out of control. Oh. But, you know. And, uh, was there any more? That, that was body. Well, one. actually, actually, the other two were uh, Most Memorable Moment and the Gone But Not Forgotten Award. Most Memorable, well, the Gone for, Not Forgotten was, was Dick Norman, is what I was, what I was trying to get across. And that's, but Most Memorable Moment, I enjoyed your, your monologue when, uh, you were talking about how your parents kind of tossed you back and forth and used you as a pawn. Ah, the child custody story. And, and at the end of that story, when you're like, I hope there's people out there listening to this right now, and you're cringing, and, you know, that, that was great. That was excellent. You know, I'm, I'm going to violate something. I'm going to tell you my most memorable moment in Tampa Bay Talk Radio. And I gave this some very serious thought. It happened about three months ago, late at night. It was on WEND when, uh, when David Fowler was still there. He told for the umpteenth time the banana suit story. 
and he took almost a half an hour to tell the damn thing. I've heard it. I can't tell you how often. On the air and in person. The son of a bitch still made me laugh. Yeah, still and had it, huh? Yep. I that, think, that was my most memorable moment. Yeah, I think I heard that. But as a listener. Remember. Well, that's great, Bob. Have a good day. Okay. All right. Be good. Uh, let's see, 990-9352 in Hillsboro, 4619352 in Pinellas. Nominations for the Tampa Bay Talk Show Hall of Fame. What an exciting, exciting... Actually, we're, we're going to have, oh, some milk and cookies downstairs when we put up the plaques a little bit later on. All time, the worst individual show of all time, the best talk show host, the worst talk show host, the most memorable moment, and the gone... A not forgotten award. Off it is now to downtown St. Petersburg. Downtown, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Good afternoon, Bob. How are you? I'm doing reasonably well, sir. Okay. Here here goes. The uh, best caller, even though I know who the guy is and I, I despise everything he stands for, the, the best caller is Mr. Airstream. Mr. Airstream. All right. That um, was my nomination, so Mr. Airstream now has two votes. The worst caller has got to be Tom from Lutz. Tom from Lutz. Let me write that one in here. I can't begin to imagine why I had not anticipated that. Um, okay, the worst show. Mm -hmm. Oh, gosh. Uh, I'm torn between anything Jack Ellery ever did and the show where Freddie Merch tried to pick up the girl who said she was a lesbian. I, I think I'm going to go with that one. I think I'm going to go with the Freddie Merch show. The Merch, M-E-R-T-Z, Lezzy L. Show. Okay. The best show, there have been too many good ones for me to single any 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 one out. Okay. Um, best talk show host, do you really need me to stroke your ego? No. Because I, cause I, I do think you're the, you're the most provocative in, in, the, uh, in the market. The worst, again, that's a tough one. It comes between Ellery and Mertz. Hmm. Um... Neither of whom was my choice, by the way, although I, I find them excellent choices. I blocked both of them out of my memory, if you must know the truth. That's a surprise, because I, I know how you feel about Ellery. I thought for sure that you were going to come and, and let... Oh, I don't dislike Ellery. Ellery just bores the hell no, out of me. No, he's boring. That's what it is. There's nothing objectionable about the guy. You almost wish he was a little bit more objectionable. He'd say something to antagonize or, or to provoc you know, be provocative in some way. But I would probably have to say it would be Freddie Mertz. A vote for Mert's worst talk show host. Okay. I mean, or TZ. Boy, you'll never know how close we came to having him back again, too. Ooh. Are, you, are you serious? Oh, you think I joke about something like that? Is it, was it after Dick Norman's passing? Or? Yes, yes, yes. Oh, it was. Oh, 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 oh. I give myself goosebumps just thinking about it. The, but it's, 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 the coast is clear. Freddie has another gig. And the gone but not forgotten, uh, it's Dick Norman. I think everybody's going to vote for Dick Norman. Okay. Uh, the most memorable moment, did you have any of those? <sighs> the most memorable moment, I probably would be when you announced that Dick Norman had passed, when when the GM had come on and announced that Dick Norman had died. Uh-huh. It's probably the, most, the one thing that sticks out in my mind. It was a little chilling. I remember that afternoon very, very well. You know, because particularly with the joke, which had had it not been for the tragic circumstances, would have been very funny. <laughs> I, I, uh, you know, had it not been, I mean, it was it was ironic that something like that happened. Oh, I, I don't know that I've ever felt worse about saying something in my entire life. But it's it's the type of thing that were he around, he would have laughed. Had he heard it, he would have thought it was hysterical. Well, of course, because you know, he would have enjoyed my sitting here squirming and sweating. <laughs> But, uh, yeah, those are my nominations. Okay, sounds good to me. Thank you. Even though he did bring up Fred Mertz. Oh, oh, is there any bicarbonate of soda or anything in there? Oh, oh, let's see. There's one line available. No, it's not. It just filled up. Such is life. Palm Harbor. Hi, Palm. You're on the air at 970 WFLA. Hi, Bob. Hi. Uh, best caller, I like to listen to Lud. Best caller, Lud. Right. From Plant City, his memory serves me. Uh-huh. The worst, I don't like Rocky. Okay, man. Well, the worst caller, Rocky. Uh, I thought you going to say something like Delmer from Dover, but... No. Okay. The best show was your Christmas show. Uh, best individual show. Okay, Xmas. The worst show, any show you do on religion because you yell. Uh-huh. Uh, the best... But well, that doesn't really count. You've got to come up... You know, these are, these are specific shows. Well, well I can't I take a nomination like that. 
Well, okay, we have to pass on that one. <clears throat> okay. Let's see. The best talk show host, naturally, you. Naturally. The worst, Sam McClellan. Oh, no, oh. two votes for Steven Sam, but he's such a nice guy. Well, he may be great. He's but... got that great horn. I'd well, kill to have that horn. Nope, don't like him. Let's see. He was, you know, Sam's a nice enough man that he offered to give me that horn. <laughs> that horn is, 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 for all practical purposes, a trademark. Really? And a prized possession. Well. And the highlight of the show. Yeah, that's right, but that's about it. It would be the highlight of anybody's show. Right. Uh, let's see. The most memorable moment was the day of Dick Norman's passing. Uh, okay. And gone but not forgotten, actually, Dick Norman. But again, I love David Fowler. Okay. Okay. Sounds all reasonable to me. Well, thank you. Thank you very much. Uh -huh. Bye-bye. One line open in Pinellas. Off it is now to Seminole Heights. Hi, Seminole. You're on the air at 970 WFLA. Good afternoon, Bob. Afternoon, sir. Best caller, I'll have to agree and go with Mr. Airstream. A third vote for Mr. Airstream. He is running away with it so far. And you've got to play that tape again one of these days. You know, the funny thing is all three people who have been nominated, all three of them are characters that somebody else has created. Yep. Uh, worst caller, Scott from Clearwater. Scott, the weasel in the dress? Yeah. I can't stand that guy. Scott from the water. Okay, the best show. Uncle Dippy, uh, Uncle Dickie ripping up phone solicitors. Uh, let's see, we'll make that a Dick Norman phone solicitation type show. Okay. Uh, okay, uh, on number four, does it have to be on your station or anybody else? No, none of this has to be on this uh, station. Worst show, Chuck Harder for the people. Chuck. Well, th this is worst individual show ever. Not, not just, um, you know, you don't like Chuck Harder. I'll go with Fred Mertz trying to pick up a lesbian. Uh, okay, Mertz and the lesbian show. Uh, what, j j just a second, please, caller. Okay. Mm. You, you you said something in, in my ear, Sergio, about tonight's show. Uh, wh wh what was that? Oh, oh, I thought you were talking about my show. Oh, uh, it's okay. Go ahead, caller. Okay, best host. Mm hmm Mr. Golly G. Wiz himself. Paul. Yeah. Okay, Paul, it's a real trendsetter in this market. Paul Gonzalez, okay. Worst host, Liz Richards. A vote for the lizard woman. Memorable okay. moment, Norman with the shuttle liftoff. Uh, good, uh, Dick Norman shuttle show. And okay. gone but not forgotten, your favorite person, Mike Levine. <laughs> Michael, is it, why would you say that? <laughs> Captain Radio, I mean, why, why would you nominate Captain Radio? Well, yeah, he was good while he was here. Well, you know, if you were into the South Florida Orchestra, you know. No, well, I do not understand why the people of Tampa Bay do not call about this important issue of the strike. Well, I don't, I don't know if you heard it, but when he did his very last show here, uh -huh. I was one of the people that came up with the good old boy kit and sent it to him. With a good old boy what? It was called a good old boy kit. kit. While, he was oh, on, okay. while he was on the air, we delivered a big cardboard box down there to the station. Mm -hmm. He opened it up, and it had a four-wheel drive pickup truck in it, little Tonka truck, which you know, this, this thing had everything he was against. There was a box of grits, <laughs> some, um, yeah, all kinds of stuff. There was Budweiser in there, and you name it. Everything he didn't like was in that box, and it was a pretty funny show. I never met Levine. Um, actually, a stranger kind. I followed him from market to market. Mm -hmm. um, but Levine is still remembered and talked about in Miami. Of course, it's a vicious town, Miami. They you know, still remember and talk about me every day, too. And, mm -hmm. But Levine's been gone a lot longer than I have. Yeah, well, it's probably about a week that goes by that somebody doesn't mention poor Levine. Well, he's up at KDKA, I guess. Well, last I heard. If, if he's still there. Whatever. Last I heard he was. Yeah. Okay, well, thank you. Okay, uh, you need to throw another one in. Uh, what was that? Best and worst topics. I haven't I haven't written down what, what I'd like to do about that yet, but... Oh, you don't have a nomination? No, I haven't nominated anything You're yet, You're just but... trying to cause trouble. Well, throw it into your next poll. Uh, or sense of the sir, audience. Sir, or... this is not a poll. 
This is not, I am deeply offended. Sir, I am going to violate the rule that I made only yesterday and hang up on you. Unbel Did you hear that, Michael? He called us a poll. It also means I won ten bucks from Ted Webb. Because he said you wouldn't go the entire week without hanging up on somebody. Pay up, Webb, pay up! Tampa, you're on the air at 970 WSLA. Good afternoon, Bob. Good afternoon, Tampa. I have some uh, nominations for you. Okay. For worst caller. Uh-huh. That would be CR in Sarasota. Another vote for CR. Yeah, he's uh, calling uh, too much. Does he call this show? No. Mike Michael? Does CR call this show? No? Okay. And the best caller, who will never call again, is Jacob. Jacob, okay. Yeah. And I believe that the worst host, of course, is Liz Richards. Uh, With a, a close second to Freddie Mertz. Are you kidding me? Oh, I confused here. Where are my worst? Best? Oh, there we go. Okay, Liz Richards. And uh, did you have a best one? Uh, best caller, I mean, best host is Lionel. So I Freudian slip there, caller. Oh, okay. And, uh... My favorite moment was when uh, you went on your diatribe about how Liz Richards was a bimbo. A stupid bimbo. Okay, Liz. Bimbo. Diatribe. Uh-huh. And I uh, wish you were here with uh, Mr. Airstream. Well, he's not a talk show host. Oh, is that a host only? Right. Oh, uh, okay. Dick Norman, then. Okay, another vote for Norman. Yeah. All right. Okay, is, is any others? Um, I can't read my own writing here, so uh, <laughs> that's going to be it for now. Okay, thank you. Okay. Take care. If, you know, if, if the writing clears up, feel free to call, uh, what's the fat kid's name over at the other station that pretends he's me? Uh, that's, uh, that, uh, she had Shreddy Obarski's place. Oh, uh, Mark. The last their clone. Who? The last their clone that they have over there. Oh, well, you're just no help at all, Michael. Tampa, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Hello, Bob. Good afternoon. Good afternoon, sir. Uh, I've got a few things here for you. Okay. Uh, on the uh, on the best caller, does it have to be a person that's current? No, it's just the best caller, you know, okay. of all time. It can be anyone. I would say, to me, Stan the Money Man. Stan? Yeah, that's, maybe that, that's before your time, but a long time mm. ago you called and no. made everything. Stan was fading out as I got here, but I remember Stan the Money oh, Man. Okay. Okay, and the worst caller to me is Rocky. Rocky gets the second vote as worst caller. Yeah, can't stand him. Best show of all time? Best show of all Individual time. Individual show. Was the uh, Bob Lasso and David Fowler get together? Oh, uh, uh, over on this station? Yes. Uh -huh. Okay, what I ref referred to as Fowler's Wake. <laughs> yeah, yeah. When he got blown out of... Um, yeah, out of a... Uh, uh, BLT. BLT. Whatever, yeah. whatever that place is over there. Right, okay. Okay, uh, the best host... To me, is you. Thank you. Okay. Uh, the worst host is Lionel. Jeez, that's incredible. I just got one for best and one for worst. I can't stand it. Don't care for that kind of uh, impact. <laughs> the best all-time host to me was Drew Hayes, because he's who turned me on to uh, talk radio. But I thought you just nominated me for best uh, talk No, best all-time, you said, right? But he's the one who turned me on to talk radio, but you're the best host now. Okay, well, I'm going to have to take that vote away from me. Oh, no, Drew no, 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 we've got to be honest here. Well, I'm being honest. Okay. Okay, the worst show was that you had with Bucky, whatever that was. With who? With Bucky, where everybody that called was a Bucky, or was something was strange, and, oh, I couldn't stand it, whatever it was. I unfortunately it's, can't help you out on that one. It's been a while, it's okay. been quite a while, but you, you, was, you were in a bad mood that day, and you were, like, being kind of sarcastic. <laughs> And instead of you being the caller, you were and, I mean, being the host, a guy named Bucky was being the host. Something like that. I don't know what it was. Okay. And the most memorable moment was the not when you had the tribute to, to, to Dick Norman's passing with a bunch of snippets from all of his shows. And that, that was incredible. It, it, it really brought me to tears. Okay. All right. Then the, the Gone But Not Forgotten Award would be the last one here. Oh, well, maybe that's... I'm sorry. That's the mistake I made. And the Gone But Not Forgotten was Drew Hayes. I'm sorry, I made the mistake. No. Okay. So, so that means that you are the best all time host. Excuse me. <laughs> okay. Keep at it, pal. We really appreciate you. Thank you very much. Bye bye. Take care.
990-9352 in Hillsboro, the only place you'll find an opening, 990-WFLA. Tampa, hi, you're on the air at 970-WFLA. Hey, hey, they blowing smoke on you, Robert. Uh, how's that, sir? Jesus, that's a gone, but oh, anyway, uh, the last time I talked to you, and I'm going to make you remember me, was the guy that said my first job was with Tasty Cake, and that's been about a year and a half ago, and I haven't called you since then because you've been become so damn liberal. But go ahead, ask me. I'm ready. Uh, sir, I'm not asking anybody. Well, you were asking me so your best and worst and so on. Right, sir. And if you can't remember them, then, you know, you know. Well, that's not very nice now. Well, is this the way we've been doing Are it with other people? Are you going to cut me off because I said that? No, sir. I'm not going to cut you off because you said that, but it's the way we've been doing it with everyone. I'm not going to sit here and read these things over and over and over again. Well, go down, go down the line and I'll, I'll answer. No, sir. I said I'm not going to go down the line if you can't remember. You know, hell, there are only eight of them. Yeah, you become a goddamn asshole. Oh! Well, wait a second. We have to wait for him to get back to his phone. Now he's just standing in the middle of the room, kind of. Gee, I where? What am I doing here in the middle of the room? Gee, I can't hear the radio. Oh, that's because I turned it down. I'll go over and turn it up. Okay, now he's just about turning it up. Sir, what 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 makes you think that I'm going to remember you because you? Called me a year and a half ago and said your first job was with Tasty Cakes. Sir, I love Tasty Cakes, but just because you eat them has, you know, no bearing on my life whatsoever. And secondly, sir, what do you mean I've become too liberal in the last year and a half? Maybe you hadn't cleaned your ears out a year and a half ago. I'm the same, sir, as I was the day I got here. Give me a break. Tampa, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. <laughs> Hi, Bob. Hi. Uh, best caller? Best caller. Is Alistair. Alistair. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you just don't know what kind of a can of worms you're opening. Uh, Worst caller? Yes. Danny the Dodger. D? The D. D-O-G-E-R. Why, why would you say that? Uh, he just, he's just so boring, and he calls all the time. He just bores the hell out of me. Oh, okay. Give it a rest, Danny. Whoa. Uh, best show, I think, would have to be your first Lasseter group. Oh, you know, I was thinking about that uh, a couple of days ago. I don't think of that often for some centuries. Yeah. That was an interesting show. Yeah, it sure was. It was an interesting concept. I wish I knew how to do it again. Yeah. Okay. Uh, worst show, I think, would have to be one Jack Ellery did where he told a bunch of riddles and he had people call up and try to figure it out. Jack Ellery riddle show. That one could be really hard to figure out which one you might be talking about there. <laughs> uh, best host, Gordon Bird. G. Bird. <laughs> okay. Hey, yeah, actually, I'm, uh, that's not too far off. Uh, worst host, Richard Shanks. Oh, my God. How quickly you forget. Uh-huh, okay. Uh, most memorable moment would have to be, uh, it's a toss-up, but I think it'd be, you put Jacob and Lionel on the air together one Saturday afternoon. They went at it for about 20 minutes. Oh, yeah, I recall that. And, uh, let's see, yeah, gone. both lost it. Gone but not forgotten with David Fowler. David Fowler, gone but not forgotten. Okay. All right, excellent. Thanks, Sounds Bob. good to me. Thank you. One line open. It's in Hillsboro, 9909352. You come to a Sherwin Williams store, and you're going to. Well, your Oric Floor Care Center is having a huge pre inventory sale at 970 WFLA. Yeah, Bob. Yes, sir. Okay, worst caller, I have to go with Danny in Tampa. Danny in Tampa, you do, you do you mean Danny the Dodger? Is that the guy that's always talking about the hippies in the 1960s and all that? Oh, yeah. Okay, that's him. Okay, Danny the Dodger. Okay, the best caller, I would, I'd, I'd have to say Alistair, only because I don't know the name of the guy that I'm really thinking of. He called you right at the tail end of one of your hours yesterday, and you said, you, you remember you said to him, hi, I haven't heard from you in a real long time. Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, damn, oh, let's see Michael. Michael, do you know his name? The, uh, the guy that called yesterday right at the end of the hour. A, uh, he used to be on PLP all the you know, time with right, you tonight. And I said, gee, it's too bad you didn't call uh, earlier because I would have kept you on. He's got kind of a screamy voice like that, and he goes on oh, and on and on. Uh, he used to identify himself as Charlie from Clearwater. Yeah, that's right. He always changes his name. Changes his name every time, every show. Yeah, well, well I'm, just gonna put, I'm just going to put down here the guy. Okay. And we'll all know who we're talking about. Okay, he's got to be the best, because I remember him from the old PLP days, and oh, he was I funny. Oh, I love him. Yeah, he is. God, if I could get that guy back on the show on a regular basis two, three times a week, I'd probably have a 40 share. Really? Okay, yeah. uh, let's see. 
best host, I gotta go with uh, go with Webb. Webb. Yeah. Dread Webb. Yep. Why would you say that? Because I like Teddy. Well, I just I like Teddy too. I mean, a lot of people I like. Well, I, I just think he's cool. You know, I. Well, he is pretty cool. And all time Hall of Fame, I'd have to go with Uncle Dick, of course. <clears throat> there, there, there is no all time Hall of Fame. Well, the, it's, it's the one last or the other. The last one. The last one is gone, but not forgotten. Yeah, that's the oh, one I meant. Okay. You know, you had said, you know, that's like the Hall of Fame, and I just... And, let's see, what were the others? Was that... Was, did I get all of them? Um, uh, no, I believe there was the, um, let's see here, the worst caller. Oh, oh you did do yeah, a vote on that. Okay. Danny and... The best individual show of all time. Oh, um, that would probably have to be, and this is another one that you did, this is one you did, and one night you went through the Bible... And you pointed out every mistake and every foible that you could find in it. And it was the funniest show I'd ever heard. You just went through and pointed out things. You know, you didn't comment on them. You just said, let's see, it says here in Matthew that Jesus went to the water. In Mark, it says that Jesus didn't go to the water. (laughs) Ah, yes, I recall that. I do recall that, yeah. I must have laughed. (laughs) That was the funniest thing I had ever heard. Bible contradictions, yeah. (laughs) Okay, uh, well, let's see, then we have here a uh, worst individual show ever. Oh, I'll go with anything Liz Richards does. <laughs> no, that's not, no, no, oh, no, no, well, that's an individual worst, show. Worst, indi- I'll, I'll, I'll guess I'll take, uh... You don't have to make a nomination, I mean, if you don't have one, that's okay. Oh, I can think of plenty of them. How about Liz Richards and the, the, the school girl show? The, the black school, uh, girl? Remember that? Uh, I didn't hear, um, I'm just writing it down here, okay, uh, black school... School girl. Okay. All right. Excellent. All right. I think that's it. Take care. Yep. One line available. It is in Pinellas County. 461-9352. 461-WFLA. Lakeland. Hi, Lake. You're on the air. Hey, Bob. How you doing? Doing fine. Good. I'd like to jump in on best show because I got a dilemma there. Okay. There's three of your shows that you did that I'm uh, having a hard time picking the first. You're going to have to pick the first one you say is the one I'm going to take. The first one I say. Okay. Bob talking about when he was a kid going to baseball games and his mom made him sandwiches. I could smell the grass at the Philadelphia ballpark. Do you remember that one? Sure. It was back during the White Sox time, and you were explaining yep. to people what it's like to rip the heart out of a kid that, at 11 years old on a Sunday, packs his lunch and goes to a doubleheader. Phenomenal story. Thank you. Phenomenal story. I could really just taste that whole experience. Um, worst host, uh, Save and Sam. Can't take him. Can't take him. Have to click him off on Saturday mornings. Um, Let's see. The callers, eh, I don't have a best and a worst on the callers, Bob. No problem. Don't have a best and a worst there. Um, Or really, don't have a worst show. I guess the key thing I just wanted to vote on was nobody would ever mentioned that baseball show before. And that was one that just blew me away. And uh, You know, to this day, I can still see what it looks like the first time I walked through the ramp and stepped inside to the ballpark where I could see the outfield and the infield and the green grass. I can still see that as though it were just yesterday morning. I can believe that. Ooh. I can believe it. I'll never forget that sight as long as I live. That day you were talking about that, I could see it with you. It was great. Almost beat out Bob's Christmas show, but not quite. And no, it did barely beat that one out. And this one this past week, um, that's the 40 minutes when you came on the air talking about your friend, your elderly friend. Mm-hmm. That was some of the best radio I've heard in about a year. That was great. That was really outstanding. Well, I thank you very much. Well, I appreciate it. Uh, gosh, I listen to you more than I listen to anybody else. Really appreciate all the time you entertain me. W- would, would you do me one favor, though, before we go? Sure. Would you promise to respect Don Richards a little bit more? <laughs> okay. we're, we're trying to get a little bit more respect for him so you know, we can close that I, gap. Okay, we're over Greatly spot, appreciated. Huh? Thank you very much. Don Richards, before I do that. Did you want to share some of yours? Come, come, open your mic and share some of your stuff with the with the people, Michael. Okay, am I going to have to do the same thing? You're you're making them do pick one. Oh uh, yes. Okay, best caller of all time, Southside Johnny. Southside Johnny. Yeah, well, Southside Johnny. In the good old days, because Southside's called. Yeah, them lately, you know, he's probably you know. Those twenty and tip thirty of, minute calls. They they were the great ones. Those were the good. Oh, ones. Oh, they were great. Worst call of all time, Stan the Money Man. 
I don't really remember Stan that well. I had a real difficult time with the worst caller. I still don't really have one down here. Stan used to terrorize the talk shows. He'd start talking about the topic and then make a sudden right turn into the Federal Reserve Board no matter oh, what. God, do you remember the guy that used to call up and again do the same thing except he would take it into Eisenhower? Yep. I mean, no matter what the problem was, right. I mean, you know, too many chocolate chips and cookies, it was Eisenhower's fault. And he would get more and more passionate, and he'd start talking faster and faster, and his voice would go higher and higher and higher. He oh, just, God, he was great. Very fanatic. Um, best show ever toss-up. I can't, I can't pick between the Bundy Parade and the Million Dollar Giveaway. I mean, well, it's a dead mil- heat. The Million Dollar Giveaway was a hell of a show, but there was another one, too, that um, I don't know if you were there for it. It was the tribute to David Fowler with a sushi bar. I remember parts of it. There are just so yeah. many of them. Yeah. I'm sorry. I'm yeah. sorry, but Bundy Parade and the Million Dollar Giveaway. Worst show ever. Um, Ed Hartley's very first program. Ed who? Ed, Ed, Ed Hartley. Hartley, Hartley. I'll tell you about it after He's the, the guy show. that used to be on Good Morning America, right? He was a baseball no, player? No, that was David. That was David oh, Hartley. Okay. Or Alan Hartley, somebody. I don't know. But his very first show, he had a psychic on. Uh, a very close friend. Oh, of okay. his. He was, must have been loaded with calls. Uh, he didn't get any. With a psychic? He didn't. No calls at all. Jeez, you would have thought the psychic would have known and stayed home. See, this was yeah. my boss. It was the first time we had worked together, and I had to sit there for three hours and keep from laughing at him. <laughs> that was <laughs> that was the worst show ever. I'm sorry. Um, because he just didn't have the dramatics down, and we were flying by the seat of our pants. Worst show ever, uh, or worst talk show host, toss up between Fred Mertz and Jack Wheeler and I think I'm going to give it to Wheeler Okay, because I work with him uh, most memorable moment toss up between uh, no it's not a toss up go baby go shuttle left off and God, but gone but not forgotten Uncle Dickie uh, okay uh, you, you, you skipped the category there uh, no I didn't I, um, best topic and worst topic no I didn't choose was, uh, was, uh, the, uh, <clears throat> the, the Newport Ritchie stand by the, the, the best uh, the, the new, new, Newport Ritchie let's, best, let's go to Newport the, Ritchie the best, uh, let's go to Newport Ritchie host. she's calling long distance she's been on hold for 10 minutes so, so why, let's why, go to why are Ritchie. you holding this poor woman up well Newport, Richie. Hi, New. You're on there at 970 WSLA. Hey, dog, I don't care if he's holding me up or not. Oh, you're the limousine liberal. She's got, hey, you Mikey, don't bet. worry about it. Girl, <laughs> don't worry in. about it. I can afford it, kid. That's right. Right. <clears throat> best caller ever to talk radio in this market was Lionel, and he was a caller. Okay. Okay. Well, he still is. Well, sure. Well, I know. I recognize his aliases. The worst caller... In my opinion, is Tom from Lutz. Tom from Lutz gets a second mm-hmm. vote. Oh. The best individual show, and I it, this was hard for me because you've done some great things about Ingersoll and the Bible and a whole bunch of things, but I would say the best show I listened to was your interview with David Duke. You made him sweat, and you made him admit things that he hasn't admitted to another interviewer. Okay. Okay. Uh, the I best talk show. Huh? Well, I got a big kick out of that show. I what? really did. I got a big kick out of that show. You should have. Should have made you feel real good because it made me feel real good. Uh, the best talk show host uh, for me is Lassiter. Oh, I should say the worst individual program I ever heard on radio in this market was the day that Tim Coles interviewed a man named Gabe Caceres who was running for a political office and uh, Coles got so carried away because Cazares was a Democrat that Coles said all public school teachers are communists. <laughs> do you remember that? Yes, I do. That was the last time I listened to Mr. Coles. <laughs> I tell you, it's too bad he retired. He used to do some great stuff. I know, but I mean, that was terrible. Okay, the worst talk show host uh, currently the last time I listened was Sam McClellan. Uh, before that, it was Tim Colts. Okay? Okay. Okay. Remember, this is the Hall of Fame now. I know okay. that. Okay. Um, the reason I nominate McClellan for it is that he doesn't know his rear end from a hole in the ground, and he makes uh, ridiculous statements which have no basis in fact. Well, he and says if someone the same thing about it, you, Carolyn. I beg your pardon? He says, in essence, the same thing about you. Oh, of course he does. That's because I have a tape where he, I caught him in a lie. Most memorable moment? Uh, most memorable moment was the day that I tuned into your program and uh, Dick Norman <clears throat> was to follow you. And I thought that the emotion, the emotional high 
was when you had to announce to us that Dick Norman had been killed. <clears throat> and I was not a fan of Dick Norman. Briefly, I... Gone But Not Forgotten. Gone But Not Forgotten is the dumbest man or woman I ever heard. Quickly. Hosting Harry D. Cup. Thank you. You're welcome. Live from Tampa, Florida, the nation's gizzard. It's the Magnificent Lassiter Show, starring the Magnificent Lassiter. Featuring the nimble fingers of Michael Serio at the control board, the second most respected newsman, Don Richards, and the world's most dangerous traffic reporter, Gary McHenry. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Lassiter. Oh, thank you ever so much, Mr. Announcer. Eleven and a half minutes after the hour, four o'clock. Welcome back. It is a uh, Wednesday, May 24th, 1989. We sat here... At 3 o'clock and flipped a coin, said, do we go with a lighthearted no-work show or do we go with the other one that would have required a great deal of work? And we decided we'll just keep the one that requires the great deal of work in the briefcase for one of those days when we really need it. And instead, we are uh, <clears throat> we are um, making nominations for the uh, Tampa Bay Talk Show uh, uh, Hall of Fame. Uh, some of the categories are, not some of, but actually all of the categories are, the best caller of all time. So far, Mr. Airstream, Rocky Ludd, Jacob Stan, the Money Man, Alistair, someone known only as The Guy, and Lionel have each garnered votes in that category. In the worst caller category, we are talking about CR from Sarasota, Tom from Lutz, Rocky, Scott from Clearwater, and Danny the Dodger. There just isn't any real consensus in the next category. That's called the best individual show of all time. Same situation in the worst individual show of all time, but nonetheless, they're open for your nominations. The best talk show host, Bob Lasseter, Dick Norman, Paul Gonzalez, Lionel, Gordon Bird, and Ted Webb, whoever he may be. The worst talk show host of all time, Liz Richards, Stephen Sam, Fred Mertz, Lionel, and Richard Shanks. The most memorable moment in talk radio. Again, no real consensus here. But again, you are free to make your nominations. Or actually, no, there is a consensus here. Uh, uh, the uh, Dick Norman show, the day that uh, the, that uh, Dickie died, and then uh, the eighth category, Gone but Not Forgotten, the Gone but Not Forgotten Award, which has been uh, let's see so far nominated David Fowler, Dick Norman, Mike Levine, Drew Hayes, and Harry Cup. Many of you probably don't know who Harry Cup is. Probably best. Nine nine zero nine three five two in Hillsboro four six one nine three. Well, only because Harry doesn't want to be bothered. And that's that's all I meant. Don Eden, Don, you're on the air at nine seventy WFLA. Hello. Uh, hello there, Don. Uh, yeah, uh, Bob. I've got the categories picked. The worst caller is a guy that calls himself the insect that calls Ted Webb's show. Uh. The insect. He fusses with a guy called the animal, and I think Lionel's that animal. He may be the insect, too. I don't know. Well, I don't know. Don says he's an animal, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah, okay. Uh, I don't have a best caller, because I don't pay much attention to the callers, really. I pay attention to the host and the reactions and so on and so forth. The worst show, Ted Webb, anytime he's talking about religion, no, sir, it has to be a specific show that this is the worst individual well, Ted, show Ted ever. Webb, Ted Webb on religion. He's had uh, re shows that he, uh, on religion. Okay. Okay. And the best talk show host, I'm talking to him because he makes people think. Well, that's And I think sure. that is the greatest thing that uh, any talk show host can do. Uh, worst, the worst talk show host. Well, let me say, because of the mornings and the weekends, uh, there's a three-way tie for next to the last off of your station. Only but the one. absolute worst is Nancy Donnellan. She don't know what the hell she's talking about. She doesn't know Nancy herself. with a slender thighs, Donnellan. Yeah, slender thighs, yeah, yeah. Okay, the most memorable, of course, was, uh, uh, to me, was I was riding home and I heard you uh, the day Dick Norman died. And then I came on in the house and... Uh, I w and turned the show on about an hour later, and uh, my gosh, I I didn't know what you were going, what you were thinking, uh, as an individual person. I didn't know what you were thinking because of 
what had happened. That was the most memorable. Uh, the best show, specifically, I think you had this on, I know you had this on about two weeks ago. It was on your show. However, uh, you did a better one on the same subject about a year. It may have been almost two years ago, and that was the one afternoon on a minimum wage. I mean, every caller, everything was just absolutely perfect and beautiful that afternoon. I don't know whether you remember it or not. Well, I've done quite a number of them, sir, so I'm not sure which one that you remember. Uh, but... I I don't know. I don't. I just don't recall no, anything specific. It's been no uh, problem. But it is over a year ago. Uh, that's all the categories I have of the eight that you have. But since you didn't have one, uh, one, uh, I think the best producer. You can put him in the Hall of Fame with an I asterisk. About that. I did with an about asterisk that. beside his name that you didn't pick him, and that's Michael Serio. He's the greatest. Well, well, you know. Yeah, you got to put an asterisk because that was not one of the eight. But put him there. He okay. belongs there. <laughs> we can find another piece of cardboard, and if the crayon doesn't run out. Thank you, sir. Okay. One line available. It's in Pinellas County. Off it is now to Palmasia. Palma, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Good afternoon. Good afternoon. Let's see how quick I can get through them. Okay. Best caller, Lionel as Lionel. Okay. Toss up on worst caller, the pro-choice poster child, Richard, or the anti-Semite lady. Do you remember the gal that used to call and ended every call with a rising shriek of anti-Semite, anti-Semite? Um, no. But I think she's the worst caller anyway. I just don't know who you're talking about with the Richard Proach choice, okay, because he never calls me. Oh, okay. Okay, uh, best show of all time, individual. One of yours, when you just uh, okay. talked about the hypocrisy of the uh, anti-abortionist group, indicated that they were a bunch of hypocrites and made a fairly good case for it, made a damn good case for it. Now, wait a second, if... if now, com communists, I challenge you to call it. to come in and blop, bang, 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 and, you know, obviously, all he winds up with is... i start getting up earlier on Saturday and Sunday. Oh, That's you, all there is to it. You're missing some great Americana. Best host of all time. I, I think, in this case, we're going to... It's either I get up earlier on Saturday or Sunday, or maybe we'll have to invite Sam into the studio to issue his commie challenge. Why don't you do that? I think I will. It's a lot better than getting up on Saturday morning. I, incidentally, I'm a horrible I have a horrible feeling he's talking about me. Anyway, best host, mm -hmm. um, Uncle Dickie. Uh, Dick, okay. Worst host is a toss-up between Tim Coles and Janet Scialis. I finally decided it was Coles, because at least with Janet Scialis, you get your horoscope told. Get something for your brother. Yeah, I mean, huh? you okay. know, with, with calls, you just get these wonderfully congratulatory phone calls. Oh, Tim, you're such a wonderful person. And Tim says, I know I'm such a wonderful person, and you're such a wonderful caller. I know. The guy just, he, he can't do anything without copying me. Oh, is that the way, is that where he got it? Right. You taught everything he is, he owes to you. You better believe it. Wonderful. Most memorable moment was your announcement of Uncle Dickie's death. Okay. And the Gone But Not Forgotten Award goes to Uncle Dickie. Okay. Okie doke. Fair enough. And as promised by the Honey Voice announcer. Why do you have to do this kind of stuff? Because it gets people like you to sit on the phone for 29 minutes and then get on the air and make fools of yourself. Clear water. Yeah, long distance at his expense. Clearwater, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Hi, Bob. How you Hi. Doing? doing great. Great. This is a first time caller. I'm a little nervous. So. Let me go ahead. Best caller, it's got to be Airstream. Uh, Mr. Airstream, okay. The worst caller... Maybe he'll call again one day this week. <laughs> yeah, maybe. The worst caller was that woman who called two days ago, that anti-Jew woman. I wish some... That, she's the reason that uh, there's a hand, people are after handguns these days. Um, best individual show was the first Anything Goes Friday with a live studio audience. Oh, Okay. Okay, the worst individual show. I was going to say anything in, with Ellery or mentioning Ellery, but you won't allow that. So I'll have to say your Joe Redner interview. My Joe did I? Yeah, I guess I did do a Redner. Yeah, one. you did oh one. Um, yeah, I'd say someone else's. In the studio but, and sat him down. Yeah, I'd say somebody else's, but I really can't recall anyone else. Everybody else did him, but I can't really 
be specific. Yeah, they just brought him to the studio and sat him down that afternoon. I was quite amazed. <laughs> Best talk show host, David Fowler. Okay. The worst, Lionel. Okay. Um, okay, most memorable moment has to be when you came in at 12 o'clock and started, found a mess on your desk from Lionel's show before. No, I wouldn't. That would have been Al Gardner's show. No, no, it was, it was Lionel, because you oh, called him up on the car phone. Oh, yeah, yeah. It's first or second day on the air. <laughs> that was fantastic. You had me roaring. Yeah, I remember that. Yeah, I remember that. <laughs> That was great. Uh, gone, but not forgotten. Has to be Uncle Dickie Norman. Lionel Smith. Okay, and Dick Norman. I thank you very much. Thank you. All right, take care. There are one line available. It is in Pinellas County. <laughs> Amazing up and down the halls, all the people that are working here, they are they are they are walking the dinosaur. Unbelievable, just spontaneous, spontaneous dancing right here in the radio station. Largo, Larg gear on the air at 970 WFLA. Bob. Yes. Okay. Yeah. Uh, the best caller, Valrico Bob. Uh, wouldn't surprise me in the least. Yep, yep. Mm -hmm. The worst one is Mary Beth from Clearwater. Um. Whenever she hears about the, the Jewish and the Palestinians. I have a real problem with her. She worries me. Our uh, best talk show host, Dancing David Fowler, and you. I, gu I guess you're tied. Uh, the worst, Jack Ellery. Uh, the best show you had. Uh, do you know that preacher that opens up with the Lord's Prayer when you're interviewing him? Uh, yep, yep, yes, yep, yep. Yes, 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 that's the one I like. And the most memorable one is when uh, Dick Norman died and you come on. And um, that was pretty, pretty rough. And um, that's it, okay? Okay, thank you. Uh, that was Betsy in Largo. Betsy, of course, will be calling Tim Coles in just any moment now. She hasn't already today. And saying, Dynamite Tim, now you're my favorite. <clears throat> uh, last week, uh, Tim and David were Betsy's favorites. I guess maybe Tim will let her on this afternoon. Town and country. Town, you're on the air at 970 WFLA. Hello, Bob. Uh, Hi there, Town. i tell you, best caller would be Lionel. Best caller, Lion L. Okay. And the worst caller back when you were at that other station, I don't remember the gentleman's name, but he was with some group like Federation for Decency, and he was against just about everything, uh, pornography and you, and was going to boycott your station. I wouldn't know which one you're talking about. Um, well, such is life. You do. Okay. Um, I thought your best best individual show was yours where you uh, destroyed David Duke uh, slowly over time listening to him disintegrate over three hours was fascinating to me uh, the David Duke interview where the hell is that it's down here somewhere oh, okay there it is okay that now gets a second vote my goodness um, well you were show I would say anything that Jack Ellery tells how he does it in Philadelphia but I don't have a specific one okay uh, best host would be you of course uh, worst would be Tim Coles. Tim Coles. It's not fair to think on a retired guy. <laughs> the most memorable moment was when uh, Dick Norman died. Okay. And uh, God but not forgotten would be Captain Radio, Mike Levine. Another vote for Levine? Why, why would you say that? I thought he's very interesting, very provocative, somewhat like you. Provocative? Are you serious? All oh, that was all the time it was the South Florida Orchestra strike. He brought people in here to play, and they didn't have the microphones. And... Well, but I'd... you liked Captain Mike. Yeah, I liked him. He was an interesting Captain man. Radio. He was an interesting man. Besides, I inherited his chair. It's, it's literally right there at my desk. It first went from Levine, who brought it in here. He bought and paid for the chair. When he left, he left it to Paul Gonzalez. When Gonzalez left, he left it to me. And I don't know who I'm going to leave it to. Probably Gary McHenry. Thank you, caller. Okay, thank you. Be good. Nine nine zero nine three five two in Hillsboro, four six one nine three five two in Pinellas. Speaking of walking the dinosaur, I like Mike Levine. He was my buddy. 
Uh, Mike, Mike was your buddy? Yeah, Mike and I were buddies. Yeah, what, uh, you and Mike used to, you know, go, go to ball games together, that kind of stuff? No, he never talked to me, but he was my buddy. Um, did, did he, you know, you remember your birthday? <laughs> Looking for relaxed, leisurely down. How you doing? No, that's not too bad. Yourself? Okay. Oh, Gosh, cool. I thought you guys forgot about me. No. I got a new category, the longest waiting time to talk to Bob Lasseter. Nah. <laughs> I haven't talked to you since I called you on the uh, first time caller, so... Okay. So it's been a while, yeah. Oh, well, now you're a second time caller. Yeah. Right? Oh, okay. You see, well, there's always a first time. Now there's a second time. Yeah. <laughs> the. Okay, the best caller. Now, this guy, he's so full of hot air, I'd like to stick a pin in him to hear him deflate. Mm -hmm. But he's my best caller because I love his accent, and it's the ghetto man. The ghetto man. Yeah. Gee, 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 gee. Have you heard of him? No, I'm not familiar with the ghetto man. <laughs> not familiar with him at all. Okay. Well, that's okay. And the worst caller is... The I worst caller. I don't know who this lady is, but every time she calls, she has a poem. So I call her the poem lady. Poem lady. I, I don't, know don't think I'm familiar with her either. Sounds like I've had a good now week. What, what talk shows are you listening to, Bob? <laughs> I don't really listen to talk radio. Oh. Uh, except when I'm in my car, and then it's you know obviously the show on right before me or right after me. Oh, okay. Mm. And the best individual show was your show yesterday. You were in rare form. Yesterday's <laughs> Lasseter show. Okay. And uh -huh. the worst show. It was uh, Lionel's food show. Lionel's food show. I don't know that I heard that. He had a show where everybody called in and told him where they're the best place to get ribs and chicken. Oh, what, and what a boring concept. I'm it glad was. I've ever done was, a show it, like that. It was the first day of my slim fast diet, too. So. Oh, whoa. <laughs> I can well understand that. Okay, the best talk show host. Best talk show host, yeah. I picked Tom Snyder, but you said it had to be somebody in the local area, so right. it's you. Ah, oh, second fiddle to Tom Snyder. Yeah. Son of a gun. Well, it was actually... Tom Snyder was really the first guy I ever saw do a talk show. Uh, really? Back, uh, yeah, it was called Contact, uh, W, uh, not W, like KYW in uh, Philadelphia many, mm -hmm. many, many years ago. Wow. He must be pretty old, huh? No, he's, he's, uh, he was very young when he started. Oh. He's not much older than I am. Oh, okay. Yeah, he's pretty old. Okay. <laughs> I had to get that in. <laughs> <laughs> okay, the worst... Okay, la laugh in there, tons of fun. Go ahead, laugh. <laughs> You'll be old someday, too. <laughs> and it won't be too much longer. Okay, go ahead. <laughs> the worst talk show host is Sam McClellan. Save him, Sam. But this is a guy that challenges communists to call in. He's boring. There, you cannot be boring when you're challenging commies to call in. Nah. nah. I don't think he knows what he's talking about anyway. <laughs> That's beside the point. I mean, I'm going to start challenging communists to call in. I think it's a great idea. Oh, God. I'll stop listening. <laughs> No, you could probably do it and get away with it. The most memorable moment in talk radio. Um, you probably... Live from Tampa, Florida, the nation's gizzard. It's the Magnificent Lassiter Show, starring the Magnificent Lassiter. Featuring the nimble fingers of Michael Stereo at the control board, the second most respected newsman, Don Richards, and the world's most dangerous traffic reporter, Gary McHenry. And now, ladies and gentlemen, Mr. Lasseter. Ooh, 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 wee, wee. ooh, we got ourselves one going this afternoon. We, uh, we had expected to have in that last hour that guy that used to play the accordion for uh, the Lawrence Welk Band, uh, there was some kind of mix-up he'll be in in the next hour, but we've been talking about that, that tall building up there in Chicago land that they, they were planning on building, and it has really brought up a great deal great deal of controversy here on the show to this point. Um, but we'll take a call from Lake Wales. Uh, Lake, you're... Uh, hello. Uh, hello there. Hi. How, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. Where do you stand on this building? Pardon? This building up in Chicago. Yeah, uh, yeah, it's the, a proposed the world's tallest building, and it's, yep, in, the yep, it's yep. in the Tribune today about it. Yep, now, the 120 prop, some stories. 125 stories is yep, what they propose. Yep. Now, here's the problem. It'll be impossible to work in that building, and that is near the top of it. Well, it's, uh, that's because the radio station's not going to be there, sir. I couldn't work uh, in Chicago in a building Pardon? that the radio is. I don't work. Uh, of course it'd be impossible to work there. 
Well, here's the, here's the problem. When the wind blows, that building will start oscillating because it's slender. Now, the Sears building oscillates in about 18 inches. Oh, pshaw, now you're pulling my leg. I mean, come on, I, I've known some slender people, and they didn't oscillate when the wind blew. Well, I'll tell you what you do. You look at your antenna on your truck, on your radio station truck. I don't have no Aunt Emma. You don't have no antenna? Well, all right, look at your flagpole. I have an you, got, you got a flagpole? You ain't got no flagpole? Huh? Huh? <laughs> You ain't got the flagpole. Look at your flagpole. It swings, even though the flag's not on there. The wind blows, it makes the thing swing back, back and forth. And it's going to be aggravating I, work. I, I, th I think you're being just a tad personal ask about my flagpole. Well, now, wait. Uh, all right. Now, going back to this, uh, uh, going to back, we've had accidents having bridges collapse on the count of wind blowing on them. You remember that? You a newsman. Well, yeah, I read about that. Yeah, I read about it, and there's aerodynamics involved in that, because when the wind blows, the thing starts to swing. i just give you an example hold of how hold, it works. Hold on one second. Yeah. Have you guys heard from Myron Florin yet? Is he coming in or not? What? In about 20 minutes? Okay, okay go ahead. Call yeah. please. Yeah, if the wind comes, let's say, on this particular building, if it's finished, wind blows from the north, the, the building will swing east and west. And it'll, it's a slow, it's slow mo movement, not real fast. Not, it's slow, you're just swinging. But it'll be swing a lot more than the Sears building will because be, it's more slender. Well, you know, Chicago is a pretty big city, and people up there are much more used to swinging than we are down here. <laughs> well, probably so. Let me give you a little math problem. Can I do that? A little, a little math problem. Yeah, a little yeah. math problem. I'll give you one each time I call you. All right, what is... What? <laughs> Something to look forward to. All right, all right. X plus anyway, Y. Florida in here in a hurry. X plus Y equals X times Y. What are the numbers? Wait a second. I thought you said you were going to give me a math problem. It is a math problem. And what do you give me letters for? I know how to. Spell. Well, it's algebra. Math huh? is two plus two. That kind of stuff. Not. No, not, X not plus X and Y and Z. Hey, wait that kind wait of wait stuff. Wait. That's the alphabet. X plus Y equals X times Y. What are the numbers? <laughs> what are the numbers? What do you yeah. got, What do you give me the alphabet for, well, man? It's, well, it's algebra. If there's a number involved in that. I don't speak no algebra. You don't speak no algebra? No. All right, let me give you one that ain't algebra then. You got a ready? Yeah, I got it ready. All right. A tax collector or tax assessor went to a farmer, and he told a farmer that... Uh, Wait, uh, no, we do the joke show on Thursday. Uh, this isn't a joke. This is a math problem. Well, me it's no joke. All right, listen to it. You listening? Yeah, I'll listen. All right. Uh, a tax assessor went to a farmer and told him, I got to tax your uh, uh, assets, and uh, well, I want you to tell me how many animals you got on your, pl uh, on your place. So the farmer says, all right, we'll wait for a few minutes. He went out, uh, came back, and he says, I have, I raise horses and chickens, and I have 100 more feet than head. Now, you give me the answer, what he's got on his farm. The horses and chickens. Yeah, he raises the horses and chickens, and right. he has 100 more feet than head. Now, you tell me how many animals he's got on his farm. Sir, maybe, uh, are, are you from the Chicago, Chicago area? No. Where are you from? We're over here, uh, uh, this uh, homesteaded here in Florida. Well, sir, you can't use words like that on the radio. What? Yeah, use those things that you said besides the feet. Uh, <laughs> we get an awful lot of trouble, sir, with, with, with religious groups and such. Uh, well, uh, this isn't religious. Or a hundred more feet than head. Oh, there you go again. <laughs> I just can't have that kind of talk on my show, sir. You don't, you scared of math? You scared of arithmetic? No, sir, I'm scared of fundamentalists. Some, of what? I'm scared of fundamentalists. Oh, fundamentalists. I don't know what a fundamentalist is. I don't know what a fundamentalist is. We have, the, we have them in chemi chemistry classes, I think. Chemistry? Yeah. Yeah, you got fundamental rights in chemistry. Why, by the way, did you want to know if I had an Aunt Emma? Huh? Why, by the way, did you want to know if I had an Aunt well, Emma? Well, watch watch, you can watch it swing just like that tower will do over there in, in Chicago when the wind blows. Won't an Aunt Kate do? Huh? Won't an Aunt Kate do? Antique. Aunt Kate. Uh, well, let, me, let me back up. Maybe I'm too close to the microphone. Yeah, something like that. Aunt Kate. Yeah, it will do. Yeah, it'll do. It'll do. It'll do. You, you know, I told you yesterday, uh, I told you yesterday or a couple of days ago, I mean, to tune in uh, that uh, that number, you know. <clears throat> you, you, you told me to tune in a number? <laughs> yeah, tune in the number. Yeah, that, 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 that makes more sense sometimes. <laughs> what, what number did you? Uh, 455 kilohertz. 
455 kilohertz. Yeah, yeah. You called me there so ago and told me to tune in 400. Yeah, tune in to 455 55 kilohertz. You hear kilohertz. some good. You hear some good music there. What kind of music they play on 455 kilohertz? Huh? What 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 kind of music do they play on? Well, it may be the kind you like. Kilohertz? It may be the kind you like. I don't know. I don't like music. You don't like music? Hell no. Do I sound like a man who likes music? <laughs> well, it all depends. If somebody likes music. You don't have the genes for music, is that what it is? Uh, I guess not. <laughs> Except I, I like I like Myron Florin's accordion playing. Yeah, but that's well, not music. Yeah, yeah. Well, my piano is grinning noise. at me right now. How who's, about that? Who's grinning at you? In my piano. Your, your your piano is grinning at you right now. Yeah. Uh, does your piano <laughs> often grin at you? Well, it doesn't seem like every time I lift that little lid up. Uh. uh you sure you're lifting up the right lid? Yeah, yeah, the little lid that covers those teeth. You know, once I was staying overnight at somebody's house, and I, I went into the bathroom in the middle of the night to take care of some business. Yeah. And the hamper was right next to the toilet. Yeah. And I uh, bent down and I lifted up the lid, and oh boy, <laughs> it. Uh, I mean, you know, I never admitted the next morning that it was me. I just pretended to be. Uh, <laughs> As well, in, dumb and as, as <laughs> disgusted as yeah, everybody. You, you know, in some houses, in, in, in some homes, uh, well, what's your first name? Uh, my first name? Yeah. Uh, Bobby. Bobby, okay. Okay, Bobby. You know, in some houses, more activity at past midnight than it is in the, in the daytime now. So when the cockroaches start getting active. <laughs> Well, that's the way it would certainly be at Gary McHenry's house. Hey, thanks much for the call there, neighbor. X plus Y. Unbelievable, X Eric. Equals Sit on the two. show for two hours and some bozo calls. And to talk Y about the equals three. In Chicago. And be two plus three be five. Two times three, six. Nope, that can't be it. If X equals one, Y equals two. Y plus it would be three. One times two. Look, look down the, you know, the traffic and report that. So uh, that we're going to work out crossword puzzles? Math puzzles. I'm working on the math puzzles. You're not working on the math puzzles. You're using letters. <laughs> oh, never mind. Yeah. Are you going to introduce me? Introduce you. Oh, for sure. I'll introduce you. Hey, hey, my, <laughs> let me back up a little bit, you know? I want to hear the... I want to hear the... Ladies and gentlemen. It's not as good as the guy at the beginning. It gives me great pleasure. To introduce to you the world's most dangerous Ooh, traffic good. reporter. That's like a tremolo. Gary! The box fetcher! Make Henry! Wow. Mm. Traffic in the... Dick Norman. Uncle Dickie again. All right. Okay, um, I'm going to ask a favor for you. <laughs> No. A little tolerance for a moment. Um, you had a young caller earlier who got on and said that, you know, you really can do better things. Mm -hmm. um, I know that person, and I haven't seen him in years, and I just want to tell him, wherever you are, please call me, okay? I'm sorry, I won't do that again, but it's necessary. Well, well it's, it's kind of, you know, it kind of makes me feel like, you know, the finder of lost love. Well, <laughs> I'll explain sometime. I'll write a letter. You'll okay. appreciate it. Okay. All right. Okay, bye-bye. Sounds good to me. Bye. Bye-bye. 990-9352 in Hillsborough, 461. Can you imagine Lassiter, finder of lost love? 990-9352 in Hillsborough, 461-9352 in Pinellas. Uh, let's see. Palm Harbor. Hi, Palm. You're on the air at 970 WFLA. Hi, Robert. Hi. How are you? I'm doing fine. I'm a first-time caller. Great. Listen to you for years. The worst caller has got to be TJ. TJ, oh my goodness. TJ. She just whines. She, she does? Well, I think she does. Okay, who's the best caller? Do you remember this man called you? He and his wife had flown down uh, from Minnesota. I don't even remember the subject, but you kept asking him if he made cheese. <laughs> okay, it, we'll put him down as cheese guy. The cheese guy. And then you get off the phone and you said, why did I keep asking about cheese? That's Wisconsin. Well, that's okay. He didn't seem to know either, but that's all right. Well, he was from Minnesota. Yeah, well, best show of all time. Bash.